Okay. <clears throat> I've had to say this a lot because it's very important. Matthew is a Jewish book written to Jewish people. There is no church to Pentecost. There are no Christians unto Acts where they were first called Christians in Antioch. That's plain and simple. You can read your Bible. So <clears throat> when we get to Matthew 24, we get, we're going to be looking at scripture. We, we get the Christian, ooh, there's an earthquake. Jesus is coming. Oh, Russia is attacking. Jesus is coming. We got the Chinese spy balloon over America. Jesus is coming. Ooh. And the main conflict is Matthew 24. And when we study verse by verse, as we always do, we get the truth and we shoot down the Christian philosophy. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God and workman that needs not to be shamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. I'll save this comment when it comes up. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Okay, number one, number one, number one. Where's the temple right now? It ain't there. That's the Jewish temple in Jerusalem where you would have the section with the brazen altar and, and, and the brazen laver. Then you go through another veil. You got the table. You got the candlestick. You got the incense altar. Then you go through the main veil. You got the Holy of Holies. You got the Ark and the Mercy Seat. That ain't over there. Well, we're going to read about that in a moment. And his disciples. <clears throat> And his disciples, and his disciples, and his disciples. It does not say, and his Christians. His 12 disciples, and maybe there were more, but chiefly the 12 disciples. This is like, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy Lord, kingdom. That was when the disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray. When you go through the Gospels and you want to, to hang that, 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 that scripture on the wall that's taken out of context, you got to realize in the Bible is who is it written to? Is it written to the Jews? Is it written to the Gentiles? Is it written to the world? And there's another one. Now that we're in the Gospels, I found another one that I wasn't taught in school. Is it written to the disciples? There are things in the in the Gospels of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is written to the disciples. Came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. You know, here they are. Here's the temple. Oh, Jesus, see this temple over here? See this building over here? Jesus over here? <laughs> are you trying to show God something he never knew? You know, your Baptists do that. You see our wonderful temple. You see the wonderful grass. We got these people come in. They spray our grass every month. We're going to have to put this in the budget, spraying the grass so it make sure it's green and everything. Oh, look, look at the wallpaper. Look, look at the pretty paint and the carpet. See how great. When I went to school, when I went to school to be a, to be a doctor of theology, I'm throwing that out there because some people don't believe me. One of the things was taught, and by a well-known preacher that I know, who travels around different churches. You know, there's one thing they want to show you. They want to show you their church. That's the first thing. We get up the airplane. We're going to go look at the church. Okay. So when I came down to Florida one time, I was brought down here. We were down here for Bikers Week. We're going to do street ministry. And it's 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. We had a long flight. We were in late. And the pastor picks it up good. And we, well, we're going to go see the church. I didn't say nothing. I'm like, I want to go to the hotel. I want to go to sleep. I was tired. I can't sleep without a CPAP machine. I didn't have a CPAP machine. The kids fell asleep on the airplane. You know, I got them the window seats and they fell asleep. I'm like, okay. So we go driving out Florida. I'm like, I don't know where I am and all things. Oh, this is good. It's the middle of the night. Can't see anything. Only thing that interested me that they had blue lights on the on the, the traffic things to you know catch you on the cameras. 
So we get to the parking lot. We pull in there. We It's a storefront. I've never seen a storefront before. Now, you, know, you know, this is the altar. These are the seats. Okay, yeah. All right. It was nothing. And you know what? Today, it's nothing today. It's a blank place. The church folded up. It's not about the buildings. And we're going to show how impressed Jesus is. <clears throat> and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? <laughs> look at all. And they're like, Yeah, look, wow. See, woo -hoo -hoo. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That's 70 AD. In 70 AD, under Titus, the Romans came in and they destroyed that temple. There's no temple there today. The dumb of the rock is there today. What happened to those wonderful great buildings? The Jews rejected God. The Jews rejected the Messiah. And God said, hey, go in there and attack them. Go in there and do a Babylon. They think they're so high and mighty. They think that building's so important, the gold and all that. We read about that last chapter. Okay? You can't brag about it now. It's gone. You know what God absolutely did for those Jews for rejecting the Messiah and bringing in the Gentiles? You cannot do the law. You can't go to that temple three times a year. There is no temple. You can't bring your sacrifices, your, your oxen, your sheep, your goats, and, your, and the birds. You can't. It's not there. And God got rid of the furniture. Rome ain't holding the, the, the furniture. The, the Ark of the Covenant, we had a debate the other day, it's in heaven. Okay, so 70 AD, this is a prophecy of Jesus. 70 AD, that, that place disappears. Okay, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples, the, the disciples, the, the, the disciples, got it? They don't say Christians. Now, these disciples get a, a, a change in position in the book of Acts. They become apostles. The disciples. It doesn't say the multitude. It says the disciples came unto him privately, saying, this is like the Lord's Prayer. They came unto Jesus and said, teach us to pray. So here's the disciples. He just told them, the, the temple is going to be destroyed. So they go walking and living. Jesus sits down and like, um, if I register, tell us when shall these things be? The temple destroyed. And what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? Okay, so we got the temple destroyed. Then we have the coming, thy coming. The second advent of Jesus. It can't be the first because Jesus is right there talking to him. He came. Isn't that interesting? They weren't there for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Here they are talking to Jesus before he died. They're talking about his second coming. And the end of the world. The rapture of the church is not the end of the world. You still got approximately seven years because we don't know when the, when the tribulation period starts after the rapture. We don't know if it's immediate or if there's time after we go. And then you got a thousand year millennial reign. So right now we have at least a thousand seven years left of the, to the end of the world. When or whatever the church age period, we, no one, no one, no one knows but God when the rapture is going to happen. There are no signs because you got to look at your Bible. First Corinthians. You need to write this down. First Corinthians 1, 22. This is important, Mr. Christian, Mrs. Christian. Ooh, the earthquakes. Ooh. 
Look at the pretty clouds. Ooh, ooh, there's war. Ooh, there's balloons over our head. Oh, my Lord, we can't afford eggs. Jesus is coming. Ah! I'll tell you right now, there's a famine coming to America soon. That may not bring the Jesus to come. I told you the other night that, that the Jewish calendar is, is 5,000 something. What if God rejects the Roman calendar, the Popish calendar, Pope Gregory? What if God has nothing to do with the Pope and Christmas and Easter? And what if God says, hey, you know what calendar I'm working on? I'm working on the Hebrew calendar. It ain't Christmas, Tammuz. It's the Feast of Tabernacles, the birthday of Jesus, which is celebrated and is mentioned in the book of Ezekiel. But you don't know that. We want the church age to do well and all that, and you got pagan holiday. But what if God uses the, the Hebrew calendar? You got a lot more years left. Oh, you know, things are just terrible. Things are just, we've got to be near the end. We got to the point in Noah, only eight people got in that boat. We got to the point in Sodom and Gomorrah, only three people got out of the city and got to safety. As the days of Noah, as the days of Lot. Well, you know, two will be on the bench and one will be taken and one will be, you mean the rapture, half the population goes? <laughs> You're crazy. The Jews, 1 Corinthians one twenty two. the Jews, Hebrew, Israel, require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. All right, you're either Jewish, Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. You're a Greek, a heathen, anything but Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's not a Christian. There's no Christian in verse 22. Well, we come from Europe, but we are, if you are saved, born again, you have a new father, you have a new birth, you have a new life as a child of God. You're not a Greek. I'm not American no more. I'm a Christian. I am not settled on this world. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. A lot of these Christians today, these Christians, I believe they're saved. If God were to call them to another country, to, for the, they wouldn't do it because they're Americans. Red, white, and blue, the gun, and the Bible. No, the Bible came last. So the Jews seek a sign. Back to Matthew. We're going to take it step by step. You don't like it. That's completely tough. You go say, God, I don't like it. I don't like what Stiley says. And God will probably say, well, I do. So verse 3, the disciples. Now, Luke was a Gentile. I forget. There was one of the Gentiles was a Canaanite. But Peter, James, and John were Jews. Judas was a Jew. I'm not sure about Matthew. He was a tax collector. He could have been a Jew. Okay? The Jews... The disciples came to him privately. Tell us when shall these things be and it shall be a sign. That's Jewish. Jewish. That's not church. That's not Christian. That's not even the world. No Chinese, no Russian, no Czechoslovakian, no African, no American <coughs> can say we're looking for the signs of the Bible. Not, not that they would. The Greeks would want to know, the Gentiles would know, give us the formula. Give us the means. Show us how. And the Jews would say, okay, what's the sign? The Jews had been established with signs all the way back to Moses in the book of Exodus. When one of the plagues was, hey, Egypt is going to get darkness, Israel is going to be light. That must have been really interesting. When the, when the Red Sea opened up, when the manna came down, when the water came with the rock, and that rock followed them, Paul said. That must have been amazing. Turn around, here's this rock. I mean, did it float? Did it have, what? <laughs> and, it, and it gave all the Israelites water and their animals. That was some rock. Because that's some Jesus. 
There are signs throughout all the Jewish life. Now, there have been signs for the Gentiles, too. Naaman and his leprosy. The widow woman that, that took care of Elijah. Now, you can't excuse signs for, for the Gentiles, but... You say, well, Apostle Paul did signs to the Jews and for a few unsaved people and those that were saved. But they was primary for the Jews. Once the light for the Jews started going out, the signs ended. At the close of the canon of the scripture, there are no signs for the Christians. And, you know, the scholars can't get that. They can't understand that. They don't have no reason for that. They, so they wipe out the last few chapters of Mark. And then the church goes to Matthew, oh, the Great Commission, the Great Commission. Why? Because they don't want to go preach the gospel. Because they don't want to get yelled at, screamed at, hollered at. They don't, that's not what I would do. You turn people away as I preach on the streets. So Jesus answered and said unto him, take heed. All right, you better pay attention. That no man deceive you. All right, the question was, okay. Tell us the signs of the end of the world. Jesus goes right away, deceiving you. People are being deceived right now. I'm going to show you in a moment. People have been deceived. You know, because you get this false prophet that pops up in the world. Okay, but that's not the sign of Jesus coming. There is no sign for the rapture because the Christian has no business looking for a sign. We are to preach the gospel, keep preaching the gospel, grow Christians, help Christians to grow, help them be part of the church family and tell the world about Jesus until he comes. Take heed that no man deceive you. You know, Jesus, he, he, what would Jesus do? Nicodemus goes, oh, Jesus, and I'm, I'm not quoting verbatim, you know, just, oh, Jesus, how you doing? Good, good evening. You must be born again. <laughs> know how to do, how's it going, how's the wife and children? You must be born again. Jesus gets strict to the point. Listen, you're going to go door knocking. You're going to go witnessing to people. Oh, you're going to look. You know, I said, you know, you talk about the rose. You talk about the boat in the backyard. No, you tell them about Jesus. You tell them the gospel before they slam the face, slam the door in your face. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name. What name's that? I am Christ. It shall deceive many. Okay, and let's see. I hope I still have it up. I have a list here I'm working on, and my my ugly faces over here. I can't get rid of my face. Oh, where am I? Oh, let's see if I move myself over. There I go. Bye. I have got forty-eight names here. I gotta move me over a little more. That's stupid. All right. Oh, well. Okay. 48 names. Let me read the caption of this thing on Microsoft Word, which I still got to work on. This is a partial list. Part 48 names. Partial list of notable people who have who've been claimed either by themselves or by their followers to be reincarnation or incarnation of Jesus, the second coming Jesus. The first man's name is six, uh, I think in per, 1607, 1660. And some of these, there's a woman who proclaimed to be Jesus, her, his mother, 1736. Uh, this, I'm going to run this through. William B. Davies, 1833. Uh, Cyrus Feet, 1839. Hail Cecily, 1892. I'm just going to run through this real quick. I was going to read the whole list. Sun Mung Moon. I, I heard of him. Two, 1920 to 2012. I remember that guy. Jim Jones, the Kool-Aid man, 1931 to 1978. He proclaimed to be Jesus with magical Kool-Aid. Charles Manson, 
1934 to 2017. That, that man spent his whole entire life practically in jail. It says American criminal, cult leader, songwriter. Oh, that's really Jesus. You know how many people followed him? Yan Ben, which means father of Yahweh. 1935. Tony Quinn, 1944. David Icke, 1952. Eng English, fo English former footballer and sports broadcaster. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. That would be today. Yeah, that guy would, would probably get most of your church today around the college football time. I know you just got mad for me. David Koresh, I remember him, 1959 to 1993. He burned up in the fire. That wasn't Jesus. David Shia, Apollo Quinnable, 1950, Alan Joan Miller, an Oscar, I can imagine an Oscar is a 48 names. And you remember, remember what I read when I first started? This is a partial list, and you can get this list on, um, I can't think of the name, that, that oh, what's that? Wikipedia. Many. That's 48. And that's only a partial list. <laughs> All right, so 48 men going back, what, what was the early date, 1600s? Uh, Jesus didn't come yet. So if you, if you as a Christian say, okay, people are going to come in the name of Christ, this is a sign of the rapture, you just made Jesus a liar. The one, the first one on the list is before the King James Bible. This is not the sign. Of, he is telling the Jews, this is what the future holds for Israel. People are going to come say, I'm the Christ. There's going to be one one day is going to proclaim the Christ, the God, the man of sin. Well, we, we'll talk about him tomorrow night, Lord willing. Ye shall hear rumor, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Okay, what's going on with Russia? What's going on with China right now? J Jesus should be coming. Well, wait a minute. Many shall come and proclaim I'm Christ. You have already had. Wait a minute, we've had World War I. And you know what happened in World War I? The Jehovah Witnesses changed their doctrine. And they said he's going to come in World War II. World War II came, and they changed their doctrine. You see, they taught the Jehovah Witnesses that Jesus was coming the, the year of when the World War I came. And Jesus didn't come. Oops. And they changed the date to World War II, and Jesus hadn't come. Oops. And see, when you get into Matthew 24, you say, well, look at that. Jesus is coming. You turn yourself into a cult. Because we're not talking to the English, we're not talking to the Germans, we're not talking to the Europeans, we're not talking to the Africans, we're not talking to the Asians, we're talking to the children of Israel, and guess what? There's been plenty of rumors of wars and wars. And the Bible states there are at least two more world wars and an intergalactic war in heaven. We might be going to world war, another world war soon. Is it the time of the, of, of the rapture? I don't know. But I'm not trying to turn you away the coming of Jesus. Keep coming. Keep having it come. But don't look to Matthew 24. Look to what Paul said. Jesus is coming. When? Paul thought Jesus was coming during his time. Paul died. See, you be not troubled. Many Christians today are troubled because of Russia and Ukraine and now this Chinese balloon. For all things must come to pass. But look what it said. But the end is not near.
Now, you know what's going to happen in the tribulation period, the Jewish time, the time of Jacob's trouble? There's going to be all kinds of wars. Didn't you read that in Revelation? And the Jews will be in the tribulation period say, okay, the Messiah is coming. No, seven, it's got to be from the start of the tribulation. It must be seven years. If you're halfway through the tribulation period, you, it must be three and a half years. It cannot be sooner. And there will be Jews that will give up. They will lose the time frame because Jesus will tell us that the time in the tribulation will change. It will be shortened. And if you don't understand the book of Revelation and you don't, you hear what I said? The Jews are going to have to go to the New Testament. Well, you're going to have a war. You're going to, well, Jesus didn't come. And then you're going to get all messed up like they did during the first advent. When Jesus came in and marched into Jerusalem, marched in front of the Roman ruler, and the Roman ruler says, I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. And you turn around and say, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And when they nail him to a cross, they're like, oh, that must not be him. Even the apostles said that. I mean, the disciples, the two men on the road to the they said, well, this, he was a great prophet. Now he's dead. And they say that he rose from the grave. <laughs> and the disciples are up in the upper room. <laughs> Everything's over. <laughs> you didn't listen to Jesus. And the church doesn't listen to Jesus. The Jews must listen to Jesus in the tribulation period. They we're going to mess them all up. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Pay attention to the end. Pay attention to the end. And when you read about Daniel and you read about all the events and the dreams and everything in Daniel, remember the end, the end, the end, the end, the end. The church is not the end. The Jews are put up on the shelf right now. Individual Jews can be saved, but corporately God put them up on the shelf. And we are here to be a stumbling block to this, for God to tell those Jews, look at those dumb dogs. They believe me. We are a dumb dog. You know what, that, you know what Jesus said to that woman that came to him? Uh, listen, we, I don't take care of the dogs. I take care of the Jewish people. Peter got all upset when you go to Cornelius, the Italian. You would figure, Peter, hell right, I'm going to go to Rome. Yeah, you're going to make this. Oh, Peter's like, you're right. They're unclean. For nations shall rise against nation. Okay? There's going to be wars. Kingdoms against kingdom. Now, I got an interesting fact here. We look at facts. I'll give you facts. I won't give you stands. I'll give you facts. Right now, <clears throat> there are still 42 sovereign nations that have a monarch. So you say kingdom, kingdoms are all done. No, no, uh, King Charles is a, under a kingdom. England. Well, because America's not. If you look at Bible, Bible prophecy, America will turn into a monarch nation because there are no presidents mentioned in, in prophecy. All right, so there are 13 monarch nations in Asia. There are 12 in Europe, nine in the Americas. I didn't say America, it's Americas. There are six in Oceanic, which is Australia area, and there are three in America. I'm um, excuse me, Africa. That's amazing how God. Africa mixed up with America. Uh, so don't say, well, there's no more kingdoms. So no, yes, there are kingdoms. Look at that, look at that chapter and verse number 24-7. You know, that's 24-7. We're open 24-7. And there shall be famines. Um, famines come into America. You're not going to come out of this recession. Not when you're rejecting God. You don't know what sex you are. When God said in the Bible, male and female, and you're, you're having men having sex with men, and men marrying men, and women having sex with women, and women marrying women, the Bible says one man and one woman. Pestilences, earthquakes. Uh, we're having problems with electricity. We're having problems with water now in America. 
and earthquakes. Now see, you see where they get? Oh, there's an earthquake in, 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 in Japan. There's an earthquake. There's a sea. Oh, the, Jesus is coming. Uh, you remember who he was talking to? The disciples, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples. What do the disciples represent right now? Calvary has not come. What do the disciples represent right now? What did Jesus tell the disciples? Go to the land of Israel. Go to the people of Israel. Don't go to Samaria and don't go to the Gentiles. This is not for the Samaritans and this is not for the Gentiles. You say, what about the Christians? There are no Christians. And if you're in Oak Hill, Florida, and you say there were Christians in the Old Testament, you're wrong. Okay? Saints. If you look in the Bible under saints, it points to Israel, not the church. Okay. I didn't give no names. In diverse places. What's that? Er places where there's never been earthquakes. Have you read about all the earthquakes in the book of Revelation? <laughs> Have you read about all the pestilence? Oh, we love the book of Revelation. How come you can't see the earthquakes in the book of Revelation? The pestilence in, your, in the tribulation. How about the famines in the, in the tribulation? That's tribulation. That's when the water turns to blood, even in your bottles. And you got these 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 uh, locust type animals. Oh, locusts love love plant food. Let's go back to Egypt. Egypt had locusts. Read the book of Exodus and read the book of Revelation, and then read Matthew twenty four. By the way, the church will be gone. The church will be in heaven at this point. Will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. You say when? I don't know. But we are in the church age, and there's rumors of wars, and there's wars, and there's famines and pestilences. India is starving, though they got hamburgers running around. That's not us. But primarily, Jesus is speaking of the time of the tribulation. And he's speaking, we'll see in a moment, some parts of the book of Acts. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. <laughs> the beginning of sorrows? <laughs> you realize the tribulation period is a period of time that's never, ever happened in the world before. The sorrows of the American today, I, I can't afford eggs and gas. <laughs> You know, that's pitifully compared to what's going to happen to the Jews. <clears throat> All right, here's the book of Acts. And here's the 144,000. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted. That's the book of Acts. This, All the apostles set for John were brutally murdered. John is put into a boiling liquor, liquid and left on the, on the island of Platmos. Now, you got to ask yourself a question with John, because it doesn't state. When John saw the, all the revelations and all the, the visions of God and Jesus Christ, was he still in pain? I, I tell you right now, you're not going to come out of boiling liquid on the island of Platmos and have a great, wonderful day. John and the Apostle Paul suffered in their life. Paul went to heaven. I believe he would probably have been relieved of his pain. Maybe like John did. Paul was so happy in heaven. He gets back. He runs back to the city where they just stoned him. I believe. I believe. Because Paul said, I'd rather be absent from the body of president. I believe Paul went back to be stoned again. And pop his head back in heaven and be like, like, get out of here. You, read, you look at some of the things of Paul. I think Paul wanted to go to heaven. Like me. God's like, nope, not done with you yet. Oh, come on. So 
Actually, there is one sign for the rapture, and it's not really a sign. And we don't know nothing. The, the, one day, the very last Christian will get saved. And he's going to have opportunity after salvation to tell someone about Jesus. Boom. He said, well, when is that coming? I don't know. You know, that could have been put off by the Christians who don't go out and tell people about Jesus. You could have been the one that would have had the last Christian be saved. And you didn't do it. You, you invited them to church instead. And they got themselves a nice chicken or, or a spaghetti kind of meal. And they went home full. And died and went to hell. Or he, he could have just said this, this wonderful great prayer. And died and went to hell. I love the track. Uh, it, it, Milton's got a wonderful track. It's entitled, I am saved. I'm in hell. Something like that. Why am I in hell? That's a wonderful one. Okay, and then shall many be offended. Oh, oh, look at that mark right now in America today. But, okay, so the Bible says many shall be offended. Well, we're all offended in America. That's not you. So if you're going to base people in, Amer in America, Americans being offended, if you're going to base that for the rapture of Jesus, you're going to turn Jesus into a liar because we've already had 46 a minimum list of people who said they're Jesus. And that list was before 2023. People are going to be offended when the apostles are going out teaching Jesus. It's written in the book of Acts. People are going to be offended in the, in the tribulation period. Even Satan gets offended in tribulation period. When he, when he loses the battle with Michael and his angels and is cast off in the earth, the Bible says, woe to the earth because he's got great anger because he knows his time is short. Shall betray one another as they done with Jesus. As the Edomites spoken about in the book of Obadiah done to the Jews. When, when, the, when the Jews fled Israel, Judah, at the attack of the coming of, of the Babylonian, Edom would catch a Jew, bring him to Babylon, sell him. There are going to be people in the tribulation. Listen, there's going to be a sign that's going to come back in the tribulation period, wanted Jews, any Jew, any Hebrew, any price, dead or alive. And then the Antichrist is going to chop their heads off, and then he's going to take their blood and their, and their flesh and they're going to have a mass with Jewish flesh and Jewish blood as they do in the mass in 2.23. This is the literal body of Jesus. This is the literal blood of Jesus. In the tribulation period, it will be literal flesh Jewish and literal blood Jewish. And what's God going to do? All right, I'll just turn your water to blood. You want blood? Here you go. Why, why did God turn the water into blood at the Nile River of, of Pharaoh? Because he was killing the babies. You got to read Exodus. You got to read Revelation. You got to read Daniel. You got to read 2 Thessalonians or 1 Thessalonians. I get that mixed up. And then you got to go to Matthew 24. After you did Jeremiah, after you did Isaiah, after <laughs> You got to read all 66 books. That's what I'm telling you before you went to Matthew. And the Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. You got to rightly divide Matthew 24. I have been telling you since chapter one, it is not the church. It is Jewish. It's the king. It's the King Jesus, the king of the Jews, king of the kings, Lord of lords. He's coming. And before he comes, Matthew 24. And the book of Acts. Because in the book of Acts, had the nation of Israel turned around and said, you know what? That man's right. These, these apostles are right. Let us get the, 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 the red heifer. Let us repent. Things would have changed. When Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's a second chance for the Jews to get saved. Because you know why Jesus said that? Did you read in the book in, in, in the wilderness travel? How many times did God tell Moses, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm, I'm done with them. 
And Moses gave the testimony. Moses said, you know, Lord God, calm down. They're your people. That's what Jesus did. A prophet like it unto Moses. Jesus stood up and said, Father, forgive them. You know what that could have been? God could have been like, oh, that's it. I'm going to wipe out Israel. And I'll take my son off the cross. You did read the Exodus. You did read the wilderness travel, don't you? I read my Psalms. Huh. They shall betray one and they shall hate one another. So the hippies make love, not war and all that. That's going to end. You realize in America today, they, we are in the Civil War. You cannot have a teacher in the classroom not get shot. You can't have students sitting at their desk having math class, somebody come and blow them away. You cannot go to a movie without someone coming with a gun, bang, 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 bang. You can't go into the mall and have somebody, you know, they get shot. You can't go to work and deliver mail and, without getting shot. You, you can't walk the street and somebody come by with a gun. You, you can't do something like this. And, you know, uh, I, I, want, I, I want this hamburger. You get the hamburger. Damn! Well, you didn't give me ketchup. A couple of fries fell in the bottom of the bank. You realize what, what these people are today in America? We are in a civil war. We're fighting each other. God bless evolution. No Bibles in the school. Don't pray to me because I'm not listening to you. This is the way you want it to be true. America. But we're not talking about America. You know why they hate one another in the tribulation period? The man of sin, Satan, is hate, no love. Because God is love. God is gone. The Holy Spirit is gone. Jesus is gone. Satan is on the throne. And Satan's a liar. And he's a hater. You know what Satan would do? Jesus would say, Go to the women who get suck or who are pregnant when it comes to this time. You go to the, you have emergency, you're gonna give birth, your something's wrong with your child, you go to the hospital, you ain't getting that mark, you don't have that mark, you don't get no service. When I grew up as when I grew up as a little boy, signs were all over places. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Everywhere you went, you had to have socks and shoes in Connecticut, where I grew up. In the tribulation period, no mark, don't even bother coming in here. Matter of fact, we'll kill you. We'll hit you. We'll shoot you. We'll turn you over to Antichrist. Many false prophets. Now, we've had false people saying, I'm Christ. Now, false prophets shall rise. You know what they're going to say? I know what the message probably will be in the, in the book of, Re I mean, the book of Revelation. I know what the message is going to probably be in the tribulation period. I know, probably. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. That's not the salvation message for the tribulation period. You got work, so the temple's there. You got to bring your sacrifice. You have to believe the Messiah and you have to do the works. In the tribulation period. It's faith and works. And the law. There'll be people running around. Grace. Grace. Marvelous grace. Come down to the Baptist church and learn grace. Grace. Receive your mark. The Antichrist. He's God. He's the wonderful great God. All hail the Antichrist. He's the of the false prophets. Watch the, watch the Antichrist do this wonder, this sign. Paul says in Thessalonians, he's going to do wonders and signs. Book of Revelation says he's going to call down fire. He's going to call down. And he's going to have his prophets. There's going to be that one prophet, Judas. The beast is the Antichrist. And then there, there's the false prophet, singular. That's Judas. And Judas is going to have a bunch of other Judas, maybe 12 of them. Maybe 144,000 of them. And shall deceive, we get a word, many. Many today will go to hell. Few will get saved. Many in the tribulation period will go to hell. 
and few will get right. It's always, don't get into everybody's going to go to heaven. No, I'm sorry. You, ser you serious want David Kresh and, 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 and uh, Charlie Mason in heaven? That's all what they've done? Now, maybe they got saved before they died. I don't know. And because the iniquity shall abound. All right, you think things are terrible in America today? You think there's violence and all that? God, Jesus said, hey, you ain't going to get rid of iniquity. And it's only going to get worse. What's happened in America is going to happen worldwide, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So, okay, let me check. All that. Okay, so well, that's not the time to look at the verse. So, the, the, the violence, the sin is going to get worse. So Jesus says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. For the love of many shall wax cold. Okay, that's what we want. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. It's been 2 Thessalonians I've been talking about. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. <clears throat> Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free cause and be glorified even as it is with you. Oh, excuse me, 2, two 3. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. All right. Wrong verse. Here we go. Let no man deceive you. Does that sound familiar? By any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Not rapture. People are going to get worse. There's going to be a fall. What do you call Genesis chapter 3? The fall of man. The tribulation has a falling away. It's going to get worse. And the man of sin, the, the, the Antichrist, will be revealed. The son of perdition, that's Judas. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that which is called God. Or that is worship. So that he, as capital G, God. Sit in the temple. There's the temple. It's not there now. Showed himself that he is God. And the world's going to worship him as if he is God. That's the deception. That's the false prophets. That's the one. Many shall come and say, I am Christ. There's the one that says, I am the Christ. I am the God. So the Jehovah Witnesses say, well, you know, Jesus never said he is God. The Antichrist said Jesus is God because I am Christ and I am God. The Antichrist proclaims to be God and Jesus, being God, capital G-O-D. What are you going to do with that one? With a time of deception and a great falling away of iniquity. And so that's why I say, listen, people, oh, isn't this terrible? The guns and terrible with the kids and terrible with the government. It's going to get worse. I tell people all the time, if the Lord tarries, can you imagine? The people don't know what sex they are. The people that don't know what sex is. The people don't know if they're male or female. The people don't even know if they're a woman or a man. And they go into the women's room and they're a man. And they go into the, the women's men's room and they're a woman. And it's all messed up. And everybody gets a prize for playing a game no matter what. Can you imagine those people in the government one day? Now. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Three one. Now we say this is the church age. This is an age coming up to what we just read in Thessalonians. This is what's going to happen with the church age. The church is going to get better. We're going to have great revivals. <laughs> you say, Stolly, why do you say that? 
We're in the latter of the same church age. I told a woman last night, I said, Jesus Christ is standing outside the door. He ain't in the church. Now, here's the church age. No, also the last days, perilous times shall come. No, no revivals. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They take selfies. <laughs> they can't go to Babylon. <laughs> Look at my spaghetti dinner. <laughs> What a nutsy land. Covetous. They want everything. Bolsters. Look how great our church is. Look how great the church. Look how great our pastors are. Proud. I'm proud to be American. Oh, I'm just so proud of my boy. I'm so proud of my daughter. Blasphemers. We're, we're Bible-believing Christians, but we celebrate Christmas and Easter. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Come on, hurry up that dinner because I got to get down to the, to the store and I got to get Black Friday things unholy without natural affliction they don't care about their children you know every child that is born without a father there is no father that wasn't love that was that was lust truth breakers false accusers incontinent fear. this is stuff that's happened in the church my friend despise those things that are good <laughs> Stand up as a Christian, preach to them. Tell them, tell them your Easter's wrong. Tell them your, your Christmas is wrong. Tell them their, their, their modern Bible's wrong. And you watch how much they'll show you love. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure. We got to have a fun church. We got to have a great time at VBS. You want a list of churches I'm talking about? You write me. I'll give you the list of churches and the location and the pastor's name. Ooh, I just got a bunch of pastors. <laughs> What's he going to do? More than lovers of God. What do you mean by that? Well, where were you guys Sunday? We were at Mickey Latland. I know. I heard one guy. Oh, I never go to the church when NASCAR race. That's every Sunday. <laughs> oh, so NASCAR is more important. I bet you know every driver is gonna is gonna be in that race and probably the position, but you don't know the tribes of Israel and you don't know the disciples, right? Oh, well, you know we, we, we it's college football. Having a former godlies, they they act like they're God, but they're not. But denying the power thereof, from such turn away. <laughs> Turn away, but there's a great turning away coming the tribulation period. Did you see that? Back to Matthew. But we don't know when Jesus is coming. Okay? So Matthew, verse 12. Because iniquity shall abound. We just read that Thessalonians and, and 2 Timothy. The love of many shall wax cold. All right, many, not all. There are going to be nations that are going to help the Jews because they love them, and they have no idea what they're doing when, when they come to judgment and find out they get to go in the millennium. Did you read that? The love of many is going to help the Israelites get through the tribulation. And then there'll be ones totally that hate Israel and they'll go off in hell. All right, here we go. Ready? Here, here's the key verse. Underline this. Uh, highlight it. Circle it. Put stars on it. Uh, put big flashing neon lights. This is why this is not the church age. Now, let me ask you a question. How are you saved? I'm saved by the... By Acts 16, 31, I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm saved, I'm sealed, I'm a child of God, I can't be lost, Christ will never lose me, I'll go in the rapture, I'll go in death, eventually my body will appear before Jesus, dead or alive, I'm going to heaven by the blood, by the death, by the burial, by the resurrection, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Ready? 13. But he that sure endured to the end, the end, the end, tribulation, seven years, the same shall be saved. Is that you? 
You know, there are plenty of Christians who die and will die, and they'll step out of church, they'll step out of fellowship. They know they'll get properly saved, but they'll never serve. You tell me they're going to not be saved when they die? That's not the end. The end is the end of the, the seven years of the tribulation. And if you're still faithful to God and you are in, you are in Salopetra, the ones that got saved that are under the throne of, 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 of God are the ones that were beheaded. They were beheaded. They are in heaven because they endured to their end. A Jew that's in the tribulation period, and let's say it's six and three quarters of the year, and he finally takes the mark, you're going to hell. That's what the law was. You could be 50 years, you could, you could die at 50 years old at 49 years, 364 days, sin a sin that you were cut off from the nation of Israel, and then you die, you went to hell. Do you know Christians can commit adultery and murder and die and still go to heaven? Charles Mason and David Koresh, if they put their faith in Jesus Christ any time in their life, and even before they died, they'd be heaven. Now, ready? That's the sign that it's not church age. Right? Number two sign. I know we don't have signs, but I'm just saying it. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, according to Corinthians, is it 15 or 11? I forget which one it is. I could turn to it. I just can't. But Paul said, it's the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, according to the scripture. Is that what that says? Paul is not even saved yet. Paul is getting ready to start killing Christians. <laughs> And this gospel of the kingdom, kingdom, Jewish, with a king of kings, Lord of lords, shall be preached in all the world. All right, let me ask you a question. Do the Jews right now, do the Gentiles right now, there's no Christians, do they know about people in Mexico, Central America? This part of the world wasn't even discovered. The first world that they know right now as far as Spain and maybe China. I don't know if they know about Australia or the North Pole or Antarctica and all that. Even though you know, there's no one there naturally. Did you get that? For a witness, for a witness. Unto the nation, all nations. 144,000 of them. And then shall the end come. So what you're telling me, if this is church aid, we're sending missionaries out all over the world and the end will come. <laughs> well, so once the Christian finishes his missionary work and all the world hears the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is not the kingdom, Jesus is going to come. You see the great error of that one? We're not going to bring the end of the world, the church age. Man, the church, you got at least seven years and then a thousand years left before the end of the world.